Hi, Leo. Welcome to Higher Source Tarot for the next four months predictive tarot reading. This is for all Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. So this is a reading for the months of September, October, November, and December. Thank you to all of you for everything you do for the channel, from watching the reading, subscribing, and every time you hit that like button and you leave a comment, or and or, it doesn't have to be both, it does something to the YouTube algorithm, and then YouTube will suggest the video to more people who are actually searching for it. So that's why a lot of times people on YouTube will ask you to do that if you don't mind, because then people will get to see the reading. And if you're new here, welcome to you. I post new readings every Monday and then again on Friday. So if a reading doesn't resonate, don't ever try to force it. Just come back in a couple of days and watch a new reading. Or you could even watch um, readings in different parts of your chart. Or on Monday, it's a different style every week. So this week, it's a four-month predictive reading, but I only do this one every quarter. So this is kind of a special reading today. Um, next week, it'll be something totally different. And if you like tarot and you like this channel, I'd love to invite you. Oh, I almost lost half the deck. That could have been interesting. <laughs> I'd love to invite you to subscribe to Higher Source Tarot. All right. What advice do you have for Leo? Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. What does Leo need to know, please? So we will go month by month here. We're going to go September, October, November, December. We'll get three clarifiers from the bottom of the deck, then we'll do the angel answers. So in September, we begin here. We've got the Eight of Wands, the Hierophant, Death, and the Three of Wands. October brings in the Wheel of Fortune, the Five of Cups, the Two of Pentacles, and the Five of Wands. An interesting active cycle there. November, we've got the Six of Wands, the Three of Cups, the Page of Cups, and the Magician. Now in December, we have the Six of Cups, the Hermit, the Star, that's cool, and the Page of Swords. Let me make sure you can see all these. Okay, there we go. Okay, that should be good. Um, so with this, you've got a lot of different energies showing up here. You've got Aquarius, you've got Taurus, Scorpio here. And then don't let me forget, I almost didn't pull the bottom three. I'm fussing around with the angles here. All right, the bottom three, <clears throat> you have the Ten of Swords, the Page of Wands, and the Two of Cups. Now, for some of you, an ending is bringing a new beginning. There is reconciliation in this reading. It doesn't have to be, but you do have like four different cards that bring someone back. So for those of you that are wondering about that, it, rep it is represented in the cards. But the Ten of, uh, of Swords is the end of something. It's a, it's a new cycle though. And so it's one of those things that if you've been through a season of crisis, this is that new opportunity that brings in a season of victory. You know, we don't back season to season up generally with crisis after crisis unless we're unless we're doing some things to invite that in. Now with the page of wands here, he's an uplifter, a go-getter, that cheerleader energy that says, come on, you got one more try in you, let's go. You know, we've got one, let's go to this new place. Let's get out, let's go see things. The page of wands is also very loyal. So it could be you and your loyalty to others but I do feel like you have it in return too. And of course the Two of Cups is a match. It's a soulmate energy, but it can be a match too in work. And it also can, um, for some of you, it can have to do with commerce and business and, and bringing in, um, you know, bringing in energy that's gonna stimulate your pocketbook a bit here. So we talked about some of the signs that are here. You have here, Six major arcana, so that's fairly significant too. So the Eight of Wands brings in a change. And it's, uh, you know, it may seem rather abrupt or sudden, but it's in a positive direction. So if something's been stagnant or you've been wondering what the status is of something, you're going to get the information here. It's communication. It also, too, though, in terms of relationships, this is energy that moves relationships forward. It brings people together and it's a commitment. It's the, you know, talk of the future and being really smitten. So if it's a, you know, if it's a reconciliation or a new person, 
either way, this person can't get you out of their mind. I definitely feel like, um, <clears throat> well, either way, I definitely feel like with a new person, they're going to be smitten for sure. So then we have the Hierophant and the Hierophant is an energy of a deep spirituality. He's a priest and he is also a marriage card. It's interesting too, because he actually can be it can be re related to physical death and you do have the death card right next to it. But with the other cards around it, it would be difficult to really see that. However, the Hierophant does tell us to be still and know. It's a card of reassurance of knowing that you are in source energy. You're being guided. Now, <clears throat> in terms of relationships, this is a wonderful partner. It's somebody who wants a long-term commitment, who brings in integrity, honesty, depth, wherever they are. Um, and so for some, this can be a card of higher education or more training, more discipline in some area. Um, it's so for those of you, this is career related. It's like you get more serious and focused on, on your career, but you also get more serious, um, investment in your skill set here too. So it really is a nice energy of advancement and it's got many, you know, numerical, um, associations and the the universe tends to communicate in numbers um synchronicities synchronicities yes but numbers are very popular this one is related to three seven twelve and of course five also but um you know really the universe will communicate in the way that you can best receive the information and it feels like a lot of us numbers kind of come in first <clears throat> so with the death card being here it's transformational and the death card is again a card of letting go it's the great paradox let go to receive and i've been pointing this out lately but the difference in the scale of the skeleton which represents your higher self to these physical bodies it's a king right he's been he's dead and they're mourning they're grieving but this your higher self it, it overshadows these physical beings and so as your higher self looks at you and tells you to let go he also moves over the wreckage of the past. It brings you over the past and the past becomes a smaller influence in your life. It's a card though that moves you forward with trust, honesty, integrity, and a purity. Um, it's all about a new beginning for you here and beginning in a place too that's meaningful. So relationships have deep meaning and value. Your work life is something that you're committed to and wanting to further, wanting to move it along but also doing the things that you need to do to do it. You know, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> one thing to, to have desire, but the other thing is the taking action. Cause you know, lots of people have desire, but they don't take any action. So it doesn't go anywhere. You have a season of change and growth ahead of you. And with the three of wands, there's a, you know, it's a card of success, right? It's a card of moving forward, but it's also a card of knowing. So he knows his ships are going to return. And so for some of you that are reconciliation people too, it's having that knowing and even sensing it. Again, there may be alignments, synchronicities, bridges of incidents that show that this person is coming back. For others of you though, it really is more of a card of looking out and knowing there's someone there. There's a match because the energy is already here. It doesn't have to be created. It already exists. It's just a matter of lining up with it. And the Wheel of Fortune will help you do just that. We do say it's the Wheel of Fortune, not the Wheel of Misfortune. Um, and when you have energies like this together, and it's every month you have some big powerful energy, some big major arcana, and this definitely moves everything forward. I mean, talk about wish fulfillment and dreams coming true. So with the Wheel of Fortune, very high vibrational energy, if it seems like, things have been stagnant or stuck, this moves you into a new cycle and it begins to move everything forward. You've got great timing here. You have all the right people showing up. You're in alignment. You can't catch a struggle, but this can be an extra bonuses too, extra money that shows up, gift cards, gifts for you, things like that, that make you recognize the universe hears you and is bringing in your heart's desires. It's all about high vibrational, high frequency stuff. And so I do feel like it, you've got a little bit of a conflict in the month of October showing up here. And it may be the change in you as you're aligned with this energy. There are people around you who will not be a match to it. And they may feel you moving away. I hear someone say you're shutting down 
and I feel like they can tell that you're moving away. They just can't figure out what it is, but that's okay. That happens. And so with the wheel of fortune, you've got a fortunate turn of events showing up here for you. So with the, you've got multiple fives here, which indicate change. Fives, you've got sixes, you've got threes. Um, it's a change agent. And so part of this is about you changing your perspective on things. As you are growing spiritually, if there's been some kind of a change, it doesn't have to be a loss. It's really about letting go, like we talked about earlier, and it allows you to open up and receive. So behind her are these two cups, but there's also a bridge to go home. And so that bridge can bring you back into in going within yourself. And that's where you really find your true identity, quieting the mind, being in that stillness, knowing that good things are on the way for you. There's no shortage here. There's no lack here. And so some of this is part of your journey, your metaphysical journey and this planet that teaches you to keep looking, right? We don't just give up. We don't throw in the towel. Now, interestingly enough, I do feel like you have a decision here with this two of pentacles. And some of you may be work-related. There may be a lot of competition around you at work, um, or it could be competition in another way. I do feel like you try to bring levity into the situation and not get too mired down by people's egos or what they think, um, especially too if you have some kind of a, like if you do CrossFit or some kind of a exercise where there's um, a lot of people trying to set records and things like that. Again, I do feel like you bring in a sense of levity. It is too about balancing though. It's balancing the career. It's balancing love interests and balancing the other areas of your life. And so it, it doesn't get you down though. I mean, it's not two of swords, it's two of pentacles. And he's, he kind of has fun with it. So with the five of wands, we talked about this is competition it's kids playing with with wands, all right? They're not out for blood. It's kind of like Nerf gun wars. And so some of you, I do get somebody like, like there's a practical joker in your life that likes to do things, little tricks and things, and they think they are hilarious. Um, it could be you too, but I get it more do, being towards you in a way. And so some of that is, again, that sort of mischievous energy. This can be about drama, but again, the more we get into the cards, the more it feels more like competition and just kind of being able to navigate that. <clears throat> so into November, things are really looking good. November and December, you've got nice aspects in every month. I mean, let's not, you know, uh, move away from that, but it really gets good down here. So the Six of Wands brings in that confidence, that feeling of being on top of the world, achieving things at work, things are going well. If you have a new job here with the Death card ushering in something new, <clears throat> I do feel like you're hitting bonuses for those of you that it's uh, applicable, but it may just be really being in sync and having other people appreciate you. They appreciate your ideas and they appreciate your energy overall, most importantly. Now in a love interest, we kind of got away from that in October because there was something else coming in here. But I do feel like they continue on. They don't disappear in October, but by November, they're really wanting, they don't want to let you go. All right, that's what I get. If it's a if it's an ex or a new person, they I feel like they do not want to let you go either way. They just see you as something that is part of their life, that they really want you as part of their life. And so with the Three of Cups, this is an energy of reunion, getting together, celebrating. And so it may be just friends for you, but it also, like we talked about, could be somebody you've dated before who wants to get back together. Um, but either way, it's an uplifting energy. This is not somebody wants to get back together and you hate the person's guts. You want to be in this energy. They're dancing. They're appreciating. I also, again, I feel like people around you are really going to appreciate you and your energy. And it brings everybody up. It uplifts. And so with the Three of Cups, it, it is a card of part of how we access this energy is just being aware in our surroundings. So take your own inventory, all the things that you are good at, things that you know you bring into an environment. And it's not arrogance. It's just being, you know, um, I guess being aware of the things, the gifts and things that you've developed. And so with the Page of Cups here, this is manifesting and it, it manifests in the 3D reality. So in terms of a person, whoever this is, X or not, because it can be the return of an X, it can be a, a chance encounter too. 
um, either way. So, but I do feel like if the chance encounter is here, I feel like it happens way before November, but um, that's just my intuition talking. With the Page of Cups here, it's a light energy. It's somebody who likes to have fun. Again, they might be the little trickster who likes to play practical jokes too, but they're upbeat, they're fun. They are somebody who knows how to have a good time, but I do feel like they can keep it in moderation, okay? This is not somebody that you have to babysit, that they go out and get so annihilated, everybody has to take care of them. I feel like they like to do a lot of different things too. They're the kind of person who would, you know, do a trial at a gym, a one day pass, just to see what it's like. They have an adventurous um, energy about them, the fun energy. So we love to see the magician. The magician is pure law of attraction. It is the spiritual OG, the spiritual gangster. I mean, you have it a few different times, but the uh, magician is one that turns thoughts to things, okay? It's in the cards multiple times that all matter comes from the mind. Everything is created from the mind. And if you look around you in your physical environment, every single object that you can see has been created from somebody's mind, right? And so with the magician, you are in an empowered state. It's an energy too, though. He's not stage magic. He's accessing miracles. He's at accessing magic with CK. And so it's the kind of magic that gets rid of illusions. You see things for what they are, but you also know the quickest path into your own alignment, the quickest path to creating, to manifesting, and you get right on it. I mean, in a relationship too, though, this is a card that everybody brings something good into the relationship, right? All the elements are represented here. The garden below him, the white lilies are honesty and knowledge. The red roses are that deep desire. And so these are the manifestations from the garden of your mind. You're seeing the creations all around you in this energy. And with the Six of Cups beginning in December, again, there's sort of a lighthearted reciprocity here. Some of you, it could be, you know, as the holidays get underway, getting invitations or cards from people you haven't seen in a long time. Or even, um, you know, some of you, if you do like a secret Santa thing or one of those gift sister things, I don't know what those are, but whatever, you know, those kinds of things where you're doing little gestures for people and vice versa. It is a card though of sentimental longing and um, nostalgia. So it's looking back on things. Somebody here, I feel like is, it feels more like you're creating it. It's like a gift, like a photo album for somebody. And I just see these pictures. That's what it feels like to me. And I really think it moves them if you're going to be doing that, unless you end up on the receiving end, but it feels more like you're doing it. The hermit shows up. And again, this is another one of those spiritual gangsters. He is a uh, deep knowing wisdom. It is a card. The magician is as well. Know thyself. Both of those represent know thyself. And when you do, you know, the universe. And so it is a card of knowing exactly who you are, of being very sure of your path. There's no second guessing here. You know, the hermit has that lantern and he's guided straight forward. So you see your goals and you're walking towards them. It is a card of depth though too. So I do feel like in the relationship that's here, there's stability, partnership, death, depth, and a foundation that is unshakable. You know, there really is real love here. And so the star comes in, also a card of meditation. You have that several times as well. So meditating, quieting your mind. And she leans on source energy for balance, for stability, okay? While she's in this material world. And so for some of you, it's that conversation that moves a relationship forward. In terms of work too though, it's like the stars align. You have all the right timing, the right people. Everything you need is right at your fingertips with this energy. It's also a card of self-care. So if you are in a, you know, if you're in a country that does a lot around this time of, of the year, it's taking care of yourself too. And some of you may get a gift like a pedicure, a massage or something like that so that you can make sure that your own tank is full, that you're feeling good, feeling centered. And with the um, page of swords here at the end, it is a card of communication, but it's also a card of adventure. And so some of you are going to be ready as you go into 2022 to go in with your eyes wide open, taking on the, the 
year with both arms open, ready to embrace change, ready to embrace new developments. There's no holding you back here, Leo. And so let's see what the angels have to say. Then we're going to have a message from Louise Hay here at the end too. Um, but it looks really good. You know, you have a couple little minor things that are like more like adjustments, but overall it's a very powerful reading that brings you into that new year in a place where all things are possible. There's nothing off limits. Like we said, everything you want is already in existence. It's just getting your energy aligned to it. I know we say just, right? It's like, well, if that was so easy, everyone would have it, right? We wouldn't be, we wouldn't be watching all this stuff. We'd already be lined up. You've got communicate clearly. So the universe always hears you. It's just a matter of, of being clear about what you want. But we said this, let go. Let go and you will receive more. Let go and let God, let go and let the universe. Well, and you've got success. This always reminds me of the chariot when we see it. Your, um, they say in a year from now. So it, when we get that though, it doesn't mean, you know, um, nothing's going to happen at all. It's like there's this process happening. You're in the process. And as you go through it by a year from now, you're going to be blown away at the results. You've got a yes too. All right. So great things. Oh, we almost missed Louise. Dear Lord. All right. We better get to Louise here. All right. Love speaks to me all through the day. When you don't know what to do, focus on love. Love is an infinite intelligence that will always help you if you let it. So good things are on the way for you, Leo. I love you and I'll be back again soon.